Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about enameling today. I've gone ahead and chosen two colors. I've got this bitter green and I've got this, let's see here, pumpkin orange, right? It says opaque right there. I'm gonna go ahead here. I've got some materials that I need. I've got my piece of paper. I've got a dropper of clear fire. I've got some water, a little dropper for water. I've got a paint palette so that I can go ahead and get started with wet packing. A spoon so I can spoon in the enamel. And I've got a variety of tools that I can go ahead and move that enamel around just a couple you know if I want to feel like I want a variety and then I've got my little finger guard here that's got that pin stuck through it so I can easily push that enamel back and forth. I've got a little sifter for sifting. I have smaller ones and bigger ones. If I needed to though we have these little spatulas that we can pick up our enamel with but tweezers work just as good. And I've also got some metal here. I've made sure to make it nice and shiny, right? There's, you know, you can see a little bit of micro scratches, but it's okay, right? So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna show a little bit of sifting. Now I have been experimenting a little bit with not putting clear fire on the enamels, but um, I feel like having a binding agent can be useful. So I'm gonna take a little dropper and I'm just going to put just a little bit. That might have been even a little bit too much. I've got that paintbrush here. And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of work. Yeah, it was too much. I'm going to actually wipe it off a little bit onto the paper. So I can go ahead here, move it around. I'm going to let that sit for a second. Not really for any reason. I'm just getting my enamel ready. I'm going to go ahead and sift the bitter green. I think that's what I'm going to do. So... I've got my bitter green here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a little bit of it. Maybe keep it in that bowl here. I'm gonna move around the enamel just a little bit more here, with that focus. And so I'm gonna carefully, I usually sit it in the enamel bowl like that, but I'm just gonna go ahead here. See, I knocked it, a little bit of it got out. I just like to tap it with my finger a little bit. Just like that, just a nice total coating. Usually, if we're using a different binding agent, we can go ahead and take it and knock it off. But see, with the clear fire, how it beads up, it kind of only puts it in a couple places. So I'm actually gonna wipe that off a little bit because it was just a little bit too clunky. I can go ahead and put a little bit more on, but lately I've just been experimenting with not putting it on at all. So I'm gonna take it here. And I'm just gonna do a really light dusting, and then I make sure to go over it again, and I'm making sure it's got a nice, even layer. Not too thick, not too thin. And I've got actually a little trivet right here. Actually, that's the little metal grate. This is my trivet. So, I'm it out of the way. And that's what my enamel's gonna sit on. I do have a different style trivet. That looks like that, sorry, I had to sneeze. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take it and I'm just gonna place it right there. Now on this one, it does go down, which I don't want, so I'll take it this way. There we go, I want it to be nice and even. Just like that. So if I look at it from the side there, right? That's what I'm going for. Um, I do tend to like these other trivets, right? Try, you know, it's classic trivet. I can go ahead and take it here and set it right there. And that's all I need to do is just set it there. And then I can take it and walk it over to the kiln and get that ready to be fired. Now I've got all this stuff here now, right? All this dust, dust left over. I'm gonna take it and pick it up off of my paper, and then I can simply let it fall right back here. It's always good to sift, because if you can tell, if you can see inside here, 
There's all these little kind of bits that aren't so fun. So sifting is really helpful. Even if you're wet packing, sifting a little bit first before doing that. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab a little bit and I'm actually gonna sift it out just a little bit onto the paper. And then I'm gonna take my paint palette here and I'm just gonna let it go right in. Just like that. So now I've got a little bit in there. Now I do wanna work with the orange a little bit, so I'm gonna do the same thing, but make sure there's no dust on that paper. I'm gonna take, knock my sifter out, and I'm just gonna take a little bit, and that's all I really need. I'm gonna put it back in. I'm gonna grab my palette. And I'm just going to carefully let it fall right in. And then I can take that, sweep it off. And now I've got a little paint palette to work with. So now let's talk a little bit about the ratio for wet packing. So we're using clear fire and water, and we want more clear fire than we do water. I'd say probably. Um, clear fire to the water probably one like two to one so I'm gonna it depends on how much you have in there but I'm gonna let that kind of soak in a little bit I'll add probably added a drop too many I'll go ahead there let that soak in then I'll take my water here and just probably just do one drop because it's really all I need and then I'll just do one drop here maybe no that is pretty small there we go. And then I'm gonna take a tool, one of these pointed tools here, and I can go ahead and mix it up. It's gonna be kind of like wet sand. When I move it, it should hold a shape, but then it should start, like if I knock it, see how it relaxes? So here, I'll clean off my piece. I'll mix this one up. See how that one, if I knock it, it kind of goes back into shape, see? So I would say, I could add just a little bit more clear fire because see how that's a lot more, you know, chunky. But if I knock it around, right, it does relax just a little bit. But for what I'm doing, I think I'm gonna just add a tiny little bit. There we go. I just not even a full drop, just a little bit. And I can mix it up. Yeah, that'll be fine. It could have a little bit more, but I think that's good. So now I've got another piece right here. I actually accidentally hammered it so it has these interesting lines. But all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, let's see here, and I'm gonna pick up the enamel. So if I were to have it nearby so you can kind of see both in the image, I'm just gonna pick it up like that and then I can take it. Maybe I wanna do like a weird, smiley face. I'm just gonna tap it. Cause in tapping, it relaxes the enamel. So there we go. You'll usually also see me holding on to the enamel too, so that it's easy to work with. Grab it here. See how much I'm going back and forth quite a bit grabbing that enamel back and forth here. Maybe I want its little weird raindrop smile to be bigger, right? Now I could let it dry out a little bit so that it doesn't bleed so much, but for demo purposes, I'm gonna keep going. I usually will start away and then I will add on around it. So I can go ahead and I make sure, these little bubbles that are in there, those aren't very good. We don't really want them. So I do think this one might be just a little bit wet. If it's a little too wet, you can take a little pinch of that enamel and then just put it in there that way. There, see, it gets a little bit more chunky. I can grab a little bit more here. Let's see here, grab a little chunk. And then I can add it and then tap it around, bringing it all the way up to the edge. So, 
just like this. Maybe, right, as I get closer. It's good that it's not too wet because then it'll start to bleed all together. So as I come closer, I'm really delicate to keep that shape of my eye. If it gets messed up at all, I can probably fix it. I would just kind of tap it around. Like say I did mess it up, right? I was like, oh no, my eye, right? What I can do is I can take it and I can scooch that metal, not metal, that enamel right back into its place. So see how I've got the structure back? It's kind of up here a little bit. Maybe I will take it and push it in just a little bit. And now my eye is back together. So, and then I'll just keep doing this. I'll just keep on adding enamel, tapping it around, loosening it up, letting it kind of liquefy as it's being tapped around. I probably added a little big, too big of a chunk right there, but I'm just gonna take it. And then I can do some really intricate stuff with this. So I do recommend that you do the counter enamel first. So doing the back side and then doing the front side. That way, if once you do the front side and you go enamel it, then you have to clean the back, but then you it's flipped over. So usually it's just good to do the back first, but you don't have to, so. But I would just keep going, tabbing that orange around, and then I would go ahead and fire it, so. And that's all I got for you. If you wanted to do any sort of that scraffito, right? Maybe I would have, here, I'll do it on the sifted one here. If I can carefully drop it down, there we go. So remember, scraffito, right, is the scratching away. You can't do it when there's no enamel under it. So right now there's no enamel under this. If I were to go through that and scratch it, right, and try to show what's underneath, it's copper. And so that can cause issues like, the enamel cracking, right? But if I were sifting and there was enamel under this, I could try to wipe it away. If I had a really thin brush, I can grab, here, I'll put a little bit of water in the paint palette. I can grab a little bit from the brush, dry it off just a little. But I can also take a brush and kind of wipe it away. See how nice it is, right? Maybe a little bit more water, wipe it away. And I can just create some really interesting line work, right? Kind of got bigger. Maybe that's what I was going for, right? And kind of wear it away, so. And I would just spend some time making that line look nice and even, so. And then I would just go ahead and fire it, you know? Just some, maybe I want it to look like a leaf, right? If there was enamel, right, again, already under it. But this one, there's no enamel. I'm just showing you there's a scrippito, so. But there you go. That's a